Good morning. Happy Sunday. It's time for church, depending on what clock you're looking at. Happy Sunday, everybody. Happy 4th of July weekend. 4th of July weekend. Um, I guess probably some of you got a very long weekend, huh? Good for you. Good for you. Okay. Good morning, Diane. How are you, girl? Good to see you. Hope you're doing good. Let me see. Um. I hope you're doing well. <clears throat> Happy Sunday, everybody. Happy 4th of July. Come on in. Grab a seat. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hopefully this week we get an answer to this. I mean, my sinus, my everything. Anyway. Who's here? Max. Good morning, Max. I'm okay. Brenda? Hi, Brenda. Hi, hey, everybody. Oops, oops. Jeff, good morning and happy Sunday to you. Thank you for coming to church, my loyal church-going friend. Oh, and happy Sunday to everybody, whoever's here. Say hi if you want to. Oh, goodness, um, I am exhausted. I am, I am truly, truly exhausted. Uh, Please keep me in your prayers. I that I have been received so many prayer requests in the last week. I can't believe it. And I'm asking for you to join in. Um, most of them have been posted on the prayer request page. Um, so much going on. Uh, it's it saddens me. It it wears on me. And Brenda knows. So now we go to the gym um, every day, every day, and um, while I do the cycle, bicycle, for 30 minutes, I moved up from five miles to seven miles now on the bike. But anyway, every minute that I'm on that bicycle, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. If you have a prayer request in, know that we are praying for you. I certainly am. And um, please do keep, just pray. The Lord knows what we're praying for. Good morning, Gary. Happy Sunday, Gary. Good morning, Franny. Happy Sunday, Franny. I need to set a lunch date with you because I need something to look forward to in July. Let me know what works for you. Um, Thursday, I see my uh, um, a doctor about my sinus things. I uh, had the CAT scan done God, a month ago now. And Thursday, we get the results, and hopefully we can schedule the surgery I need to get this done. i uh happy to be near the end of this sinus crap. Anyway, keep me in my your prayers. Um, like I said, I have a long list of prayer requests, so, um, you can find them on our prayer request page, and if they're members of our church there, I share them to our church page, but just say for our prayer requests from Cowboy Church Lord, he knows, because I'll tell you what, I may not hear from people all the time, but when they need prayers, they know where to go, and they come to Cowboy Church. And we are a prayer machine. So pray, pray, pray. Pray. However you like to pray, pray. I say Hail Marys. It's a Catholic thing. <laughs> but I hope you're well. I hope you're having a nice holiday weekend. Please share this message because some people aren't going to be watching it, but they'll watch it later and they'll find it on your page. 
So, yes, it is 4th of July weekend, our Independence Day. Um, thank God for the United States of America, and may he keep our country safe. And I want to give a shout out to our YouTube viewers. There's some people that are not on Facebook, but they are loyal YouTube viewers. Thank you very much. And if you're not a YouTube viewer, but you're a Cow Cowboy Church member, I want to ask you to go to Pastor Cheryl AJ Cowboy Church and just click on the subscribe button. I was told we get up to a thousand subscribers and you get perks from YouTube. So just jump in there real quick, punch on the button that says subscribe and um, that's all you need to do and I thank you for that. Um, our church is growing. We do get people in there that watch Cowboy Church on YouTube and hey to you and thank you to you. God bless you. And no, may they know that they are included in our prayers. Okay? And uh, I have a joke for you. So if you want to share this before I p say the joke of the day, I'll give you a minute. I'm going to take a sip of my tea and uh, wait for you to come back. Just share it on your page. I know Gary, uh, good morning, Christy. And congratulations to our Shyla, now a member of God's family. Her daughter, Christy's daughter, was baptized this last week. Congratulations. And her daughter made up her own mind that that's what she wanted to do. God bless her. Mwah! I love you both. Hope to see you around town sometime. I'm getting out and about every now and then. Goes, goes to bingo on Sunday. Yeah. Yep, Christy's lovely little teenage daughter decided she too wanted to be baptized and got it done. It's just adorable. So, if we're ready, here's the joke of the day. <clears throat> That's for sure, Christy. God bless you, honey. You're a good mama. You are a good mama. Everywhere you see Christy, you see her with Shiloh. Uh, they're inseparable and they're clones. Check out her page. I'm sure she'll accept your friend request if you tell her you're from Cowboy Church. Right? Okay. God bless you, honey. You're a good mama. And yes, Gary, we are thanking the Lord for another day. Amen. Hope you're well. Sorry I missed you when you were in AJ. Uh, sorry. You know, I get so many messages on my phone, something slipped through the cracks. And obviously, that was one of them. I apologize. So here's your joke of the day. An 80-year-old man's golf game was hampered by poor eyesight. He could hit the ball well, but he couldn't see where it went. So, his doctor teamed him up with a 90-year-old man who had perfect eyesight and was willing to go along to serve as a spotter. The 80-year-old man hit the first ball and asked his companion, Did you see where the ball landed? Yep, said the 90-year-old. Where did it go? The 80-year-old demanded. The 90-year-old replied, I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember. Okay. Yay. That's it. That's your joke of the day. Hope you liked it. Oh, Gary. Interesting. Moving back in a year. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Max. Okay. And now, and now I want you to simmer down. I want you to open your hearts and clear your minds to receive God's message. Dear Lord, you are an awesome God and we thank you for all you have given us. We can hardly look around and not see the wonders of your majesty. We ask your guidance in our daily lives so we live the way you 
want us to live, Lord. We ask blessings on all those here in your word right now, wherever they may be. Lord, please bless them. We pray for those who are on our prayer request list. Lord, the, 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 the needs are heavy. The enemy is running rampant here, Lord. Please help us. And we also ask you to touch our leaders' hearts that they lead in the way you want them to lead. And we pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 And I want to give a shout out before I get into the message. To those of you who listen and don't say a word, you know who you are. God bless you for coming to church. You don't always have to participate. The whole idea is just come to church and you do. I love you and thank you for that. You know who you are. All right? Okay. All right, guys. I am putting my phone down so I'm not distracted. Please share this message so people can hear these words. It's a good message. It's very extremely appropriate. And uh, this will be the last <clears throat> Women in the Bible in the Women in the Bible series. We've got three or four weeks, I think four weeks left in July, and then I go on my sabbatical, and I go visit my friends in Oregon. I can't wait. I'm ready to go and see the ocean. And um, prayers for safe travels for me. <laughs> but anyway, we are in Luke chapter 13, starting at verse 10. Jesus heals on the Sabbath. One Sabbath day, as Jesus was teaching in a synagogue, he saw a woman who had been crippled by an evil spirit. She had been bent double for 18 years and was unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and he said, Dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. And then he touched her, and instantly she could stand straight. How she praised God! But the leader in charge of the synagogue was indignant that Jesus had healed her on the Sabbath day. There are six days of the week for working, he said to the crowd. Come on those days to be healed, not on the Sabbath, he said. But the Lord replied, You hypocrites, each of you works on the Sabbath day. Don't you untie your ox or your donkey from its stall on the Sabbath and lead it out for water? This dear woman, a daughter of Abraham, has been held in bondage by Satan for 18 years. Isn't it right that she be released even on the Sabbath? Well, this shamed his enemies, but all the people rejoiced at the wonderful things Jesus did. Amen. <laughs> you know, amen. Jesus heals. We need to know this today. Those of you watching who we've been praying for, who have people we pray for, or we pray for you, need to know that Jesus heals. Miracles happen, and Jesus heals. Jesus attended public worship every Sabbath day. He was in the temple. And even if you are sick or handicapped, it should not keep you from public worship on Sabbath day. Of course, that's a little different for us because we are online and you could be home or wherever you are comfortable attending church on the Sabbath, which today is our Sabbath. So it shouldn't keep you from attending church. 
This woman came to Jesus to be taught and to get right with her soul. And then Jesus cured her from her handicap. She didn't come forward to him like so many people and say, Lord, Lord, heal me. She didn't come forward like so many and ask for a miracle. He found her in the crowd and did it himself. He felt pity for this woman. And while he was praying and while he was teaching and while he was in the temple, he performed a miracle. Jesus cured her from her handicap when she just came to hear his words. And this cure represents the work of Jesus' grace upon the soul. When crooked souls are made straight, they will show it by glorifying God. She was made straight, able to stand upright and praise the Lord immediately. Jesus knew that this leader of the temple was very hostile towards him and to his gospel. And he didn't even try to cover it with pretending to be excited about it on the Sabbath day. He really would not want them to be healed any day of the week. He didn't like Jesus Christ of Nazareth at all. But if Jesus speaks the word and puts forth his healing power, sinners are set free. And this deliverance often happens on the Lord's day, on Sunday, on the Sabbath. If the Lord wants to heal on the Sabbath, he will. And he even laid out his case to them. You can't work on Sunday? Well, what about your animals? Don't you work? You untie them? You take them over for water? Isn't that part of your daily chores? And you do that on Sunday too, or do you let them stand over there and be thirsty and dehydrate? He made a very good point, and he shamed these temple guards, for lack of a better word. They weren't guards. They were there. And this man was in charge of the temple, probably a Pharisee. It doesn't say Pharisee, but he said leader of the temple. So while he was teaching in the temple on this particular Sunday, he confirmed what he preached and performed a miracle right then and there, a miracle of mercy. The woman had a disability for 18 years, which an evil spirit had brought upon her. It said so in the scripture that she was unable to stand up straight and had been crippled by an evil spirit. It says so in the scripture. Now, does that tell us that it's the evil spirits, it's the devil, that is behind all the illness in this world? Oh, that's what I'm hearing. Illness is not of God. Cures are from God. Illness comes from the devil. And there he is, in this poor woman bent over double, but she brought herself to church. She had been disabled for 18 years. She could she was bowed over and could not lift herself. She could not stand up straight. And although she was deformed and it was very painful for her to move, she still went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Even people, even bodily infirmities, unless they're extremely bad or contagious maybe, it should not keep us from public worship on the Sabbath day because God can help us beyond our expectations. We go to church to hear the word and to feed our souls. We sit at the feet of the Lord and listen 
to the word of the Lord. And the woman didn't even ask Jesus for help. Before she called out to him, he answered. She came to be taught and get right in her soul and then received relief from her illness. And the immediate cure speaks of Jesus, of God's almighty power. 18 years of illness and he laid hands on her and healed her immediately. And Jesus invites those to come to him for a healing. Just like he called that woman forward. He was looking out over the crowd and saw her and called her forward. Dear daughter, come here. Those that labor under spiritual infirmities. And if he calls us. He will help us when we come to him. Listen for his call. He will call. You should not lose faith if you've been sick for a very long time. God can relieve you. Jesus has the power over all evil and all illness, all infirmities. Jesus is stronger than Satan. No matter what he puts on you, if it's cancer, if it's a brain tumor, if you've been in a motorcycle accident, if you're sick because your medicines are all messed up, Jesus can and will cure you. Even though the woman could not lift herself up, Jesus lifted her up and enabled her to lift herself up. She that had been crooked was immediately made straight. And scripture was fulfilled from Psalm 146, 8. The Lord opened the eyes of the blind. The Lord raised them that are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. Amen. 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 Excuse me. Pretty soon this is going to be over. Praise God. What are you going to do if you don't see Pastor Cheryl with the hanky in her hand? The Lord is righteous. The Lord loves the righteous. Unsanctified hearts are under the spirit of infirmity. They are distorted. The faculties of the soul are very much out of place. They are bowed down toward things below. They cannot lift themselves up to God and heaven with a bent, crooked soul. They do not seek Jesus, but Jesus calls to them. He lays hands on them and grace on them. Jesus speaks healing words to them and cures their illness, their infirmity. He makes their soul straight, raises it above worldly things, and directs its infections heavenward. Man cannot make that straight, which God has made crooked. Yet the grace of God can make that straight, which the sin of man has made crooked. Amen. Ecclesiastes 7.13 tells us, Consider the work of God, for who can straighten what was made crooked? Jesus. Many of the children of God are under a spirit of infirmity through prevailing grief and fear their souls are cast down and worried. They are troubled. They are bowed down greatly. They go mourning all the day long. They are sad and mourning. But Christ, 
by the spirit of adoption, looses them from their infirmity in his time and raises them up. I am troubled. I am bowed down greatly. I go mourning all the day long, says Psalm 38, 6. The woman glorified God, gave him the praise for her cure, to which all praise is due. 18 years, this woman was handicapped. 18 years of being bowed down of not being able to look up to God in heaven, of not being able to look up to the sky. She saw the ground. She looked below where the evil Satan was. And it was Satan who put this on this woman for whatever reason. And it was Jesus Christ of Nazareth who saw her, who had pity on her, who called her forward, woman, please come to me. Dearest woman, you are healed. Those are the words we want to hear. And she glorified God. She gave him the praise for her cure when all praise was due. Oh, it's been a rough week. When crooked souls are made straight, they will show it by glorifying God. And the boss of the synagogue, hold on, you know how I get. Let's talk about those Pharisees for a second here. The boss of the synagogue acted like Jesus had committed some heinous crime in healing this woman. The Pharisees, Pharisee was angry because it was done on the Sabbath. You would think the miracle would have convinced him that it had to be done on the Sabbath. It was a miracle. Oh my gosh, who cares what day of the week it is? Who cares where you are? Is a miracle. The woman, 18 years, had been handicapped. And Jesus said, one word, two words, you are healed, my dear woman. Took it away from her. And the Pharisee was angry. He was indignant. You would think that the miracle would have convinced him of the circumstances of it being done on the Sabbath. Who cares? It's the Sabbath. Did you just see this people? Jesus Christ of Nazareth cured this woman of an 18-year illness. Never was such an honor done to the synagogue. The, the temple, the church itself, was honored with Jesus Christ performing a miracle inside of it on this day. Amen. Praise the Lord. We just witnessed another miracle. And yet he was angry. He had not, indeed, he did not want to argue with Jesus about it after Jesus pointed out, hey, dude, let me ask you a question. Don't you untie your animals and take them out for a drink on Sunday, on the Sabbath? Isn't that part of your chores? Don't you do that? Well, he knew darn well they'd do that. He had no argument. No argument for Jesus. But he said to the people, there are six days that men should work. They should not come to church on Sunday and work in the church, he said. Oh, for crying out loud. What about the miracle that just happened? What about the miracle? Hello? Jesus just cured this woman of an 18-year illness, 
and you're worried about him performing a miracle in the church on the Sabbath? Give me a break. What's the matter with you? And he made light of the miracle as if it was a normal, everyday thing that Jesus Christ, here he is again, performing miracles. Whoa, whoa. Right. Here he is again. Here he is performing miracles. Here he is curing people. Here he is being God. Here he is. Amen. What about that, Mr. Pharisee? Who cares what day of the week it is? Is it a normal, everyday thing for miracles to happen? No. You may come and be healed any day of the week, they said, but not on the Sabbath. Why not? Jesus' miracles have become, in his eyes, cheap and common. Shame on you. Here... He is stretching the law behind its intention. God wants you to have a day of rest. But if things have to be done on Sunday, they have to be done. And if the time is right for a miracle to be performed on a Sunday, let it happen on the Sabbath, on the Sunday. Let it happen, and it will happen if it is in God's time. Either healing or being healed with the touch of a hand or a word to be that work which is forbidden on the Sabbath. This was obviously the work of God. God can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, wherever he happens to be. Works of mercy and charity are works of piety and therefore very proper on Sundays. Jesus answers as he answered others who also called him a hypocrite. And Jesus, who knows men's hearts, can call these hypocrites by their name. He told them, you hypocrite. You do this on Sunday, but I can't cure this poor woman on Sunday. You walk your animals out for Sunday, which is part of your chores, but I can't heal this woman, do my work. You, sir, are a hypocrite. And we are not able, Jesus can do this because Jesus knows men's hearts. He knows what's in your heart. He knows what you're thinking. He knows the whole intention of this man saying this about his work in the on the Sabbath is not to keep the law. It's to make Jesus look bad. And who ended up looking bad? Who was the fool? And we must judge carefully or not at all but when we do we can only judge according to what we see on the outside right because we don't know anybody's heart so mind your own business don't judge it's not our business to judge this woman has been in this deplorable condition for 18 years and now that there is an opportunity of delivering her, it should not be deferred a moment longer. 18 years was long enough, Jesus said. Don't you think she was sick long enough? Don't you think I'm here, I see her, I can cure her? I should do it right now, and I did, and I will, and I'll do it again. I'll do it whenever I want. <laughs> you are not the boss of me. Go away. Get thee behind me, Satan. 
It was fitting and proper to heal this woman on the Sabbath in front of the public in the synagogue that they may all be witnesses of this miracle. And we, when he had said these things, all his adversaries, all his enemies were ashamed. They were put to silence, as Matthew Henry said. And they were angry. And they didn't have a word to say for themselves. It was not a shame that worked repentance. They were shamed, but they didn't ask forgiveness. They didn't say, I'm sorry, Lord, you're right. You absolutely did the right thing. The poor woman, look at her, praising God. And all around her, the woman led everybody into praise for God, for her healing. A woman led them into prayer. A woman was chosen by Jesus. She didn't go up and say, Lord, heal me. Jesus said, woman, come to me that I might heal you. And Jesus is calling you to him so he can heal you. Can you hear him? He's calling. Lay all your worries and troubles at his feet. We do that every week, don't we? But it was not, they were not shamed and asking to repent, but rather indignation. <laughs> Look at him, he says that to me. How dare he, said the Pharisee, how dare you? I'm telling the people here, nobody works on the Sabbath and Jesus is telling me I'm wrong? Oh, he scoffed. Sooner or later, all the adversaries, all the enemies of Jesus Christ of Nazareth will be made ashamed. They will be ashamed. They will be fools. People, Jesus heals. We don't even have to ask him. He's there. He knows. We pray and we pray. And he tells us knock and keep on knocking. And we have seen over these weeks that Jesus cures women. He welcomes women into his, into his church. He welcomes them as his disciples. He calls them to preach his word as he did me 11 years ago. Called me. I am a called preacher. <laughs> Don't be indignant. Don't judge. Don't throw rules around just to make yourself look good and somebody else look bad. Jesus can heal you of whatever. It is the will of God that we pray your will be done. And his will on this day was to heal this woman. And you all must, must, as Peter said on Pentecost Sunday, aren't you glad you attend every Sunday because things build week after week after week after week in these lessons. And on Pentecost, we learned of the spirit that came down to this earth after Jesus ascended into heaven after he rose from the cross, after he was killed on the cross, after he spent his years preaching, he left us a gift. And on that Pentecost Sunday, Peter said, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then 
you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You will. And now it is time for our prayer circle. And we're going to pray for exactly that. Please accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior so that you too can spend eternity in heaven so that you can be healed and know the love of God and Jesus Christ. And we're going to pray for that right now because it's time for our prayer circle. And this is our prayer circle. This is where we come and lay our request at the feet of the Lord and give thanks for answered prayers. Lord, we pray for the lost souls. We pray we can bring them into the fold. We pray for all those that have requested prayers through me, Lord. We, we offer up prayers for all those suffering right now, Lord, and their loved ones, Lord. We pray for all of those battling cancer. We pray for a cure. Your will be done, Lord. We pray for those who live in a home with an abusive person, Lord. Please touch the heart of the abuser and keep those being abused safe. And for all those things that lie silent in each and every one of our hearts, In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen. Whew. Thank you, Lord, for that. And now let us join hands together virtually and pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. 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 So, whew, that was a good one, huh? I want it. Cynthia Green, my girlfriend, thank you for coming to church. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming to church. I want to thank you for sharing this message because I know you will. And I want to thank all our YouTube viewers for joining in today on this Sunday. God bless you. Remember God loves you and I love you. Pray, pray, pray for our sick. Pray for those who are having trouble. I thank you. God thanks you. I love you. God loves you too. So you all have a very good week. share this message i'll see you next sunday and i'll see what god has to tell you next week bye bye take care god bless and remember if you get down on saturday night you still gotta get up for church on sunday morning bye bye take care and god bless see you later have a great week.